about 100 degrees rich of P. So basically we're just watching the exhaust gas temperatures rise here as we reduce the amount of fuel going to the engine. And at some point they're going to peak and then start to fall again. And there we'll just start to enrich in it again so that we stay on, there we go. So we'll enrich in it real quick and go to about 1390 on the fourth cylinder. That was the first one to actually peak. So, uh, or yeah, 1390. So right around in there, and here it helps to show us, uh, or tries to, tries to help at least, showing us how many degrees rich of peak we currently are. So now we, uh, yeah, we'll call that good about right there, and uh, that's how we move the engine out. A little while back we went to the uh, ice runway at Alton Bay, that's right up over here, and uh, it's the only official ice runway in the contiguous U.S., so that was pretty fun, pretty cool. Uh, it looks like you can kind of still see it over there, uh, where it was plowed. It's closed now because uh, it was starting to melt, just getting too warm. But uh, basically that's on this, the, the near side of Lake Winnipesaukee, and then we're heading to Boltboro over on the other side. Want to go try to land on it and see, uh, see if we can keep from falling through? We could. Boltboro traffic says on 150 is back taxiing 2-0 on Boltboro. There's Laconia over there, and then Moltenboro is just kind of nestled in between the, the hills and mountains over here. Do you see the guy that's farting here? I haven't seen him. I'm, I'm looking for him. Moltenboro traffic, Cessna 150 uh, turning to the north uh, at uh, about one, uh, 1,500 feet, headed north. Moltenboro traffic. I thought he was going to eat. And both of traffic in the seven hotel pump is about a uh, six and a half mile final for runway two, or at 2,500 feet. Both of them is also kind of fun because uh, the runway is not super short; it's 3,500 feet long, uh, but it feels kind of small because it's tucked in between some probably 100, 150 foot tall trees. So uh, it's still a bit of an obstacle uh, takeoff and landing. So one of the things that's not covered a whole lot in uh, most primary flight training is sort of real-world short field operations. You, know, you obviously have to demonstrate like a short field takeoff and a short field landing, but a lot of times those are done on you know 5,000 foot runways with clear approach paths. So something that's not really covered too well is what the sight picture should actually look like uh, when you're trying to land over an obstacle. Basically, you just want to put the uh, obstacle that you're trying to clear 
uh, just below kind of your uh, aiming point to touchdown. So like here we can see the trees and they're just right below uh, in the sight picture, the runway. Also people in general are inordinately scared of getting close to trees and other obstacles. Right. If you're landing in a runway like this, you need to be close to the tree or it's right. not going to work. Right? Gears down, props full forward, trees are nice and tight. There's a crashed airplane. Oh wow. And uh, one, one trick here at Moultonboro is you have to land just off the center line because the center line is kind of uh, pretty bumpy. It looks like, what the hell happened here? The, the wind socks all torn up. It, right. It like, it's like there's a tornado air, or something. Right. Airplanes flipped Didn't there over. Used, weren't there like more trees here last time? <laughs> like, <laughs> Some apocalypse has <laughs> rolled through Moultonboro. <laughs> Sign in here. <laughs> Let's take the plow. <laughs> Let's take the plow. <laughs> I'm driving the snow plow today. What's the clearance on this thing like? Is it go over these bumps and then you can get they go slowly. <laughs> this truck sounds like a tank. <laughs> So what do we know right now? <laughs> so in a week, the two of us, my girlfriend and another friend of ours, are going to the Bahamas, but we have no idea where we're going, what we're doing, or where we're going to stay. So we've got the handy 2017 Bahamas pilot guide, and we're going to try to figure out where to go. I think several of them probably have that note. If you want to get a ride, you just fly over the town with your landing gear down. It's just how it works in the Bahamas. That's an awesome system. <laughs> how low do you think it is? Like 10 feet? 20 feet? Oh, definitely like treetop height. Alright. Good lunch. Uh, always fun, always an adventure here in Moultonboro. It's a really nice place. They do a great job here, really maintain the airport. Really just a you know, great destination. It's so convenient because it's like a 25 minute flight, so it costs practically nothing, but you end up sort of in the middle of nowhere in the mountains of New Hampshire, getting some great food with some great views. That's yeah, just incredible. And Moultonboro traffic in the Summit Hotel Pomps departing runway 20 of Moultonboro. Team Trump.
Okay, we'll get lined up on the runway here. Mixture is rich, so we'll get a full power. And release the brakes. And we'll try not to stay on the center line. Actually, it's kind of hard to stay, just like, you know, maintain a foot off the center line or something. But the center line's kind of rough here. And there we go. Such a pretty view out here. Yeah, I think airports like Moultonboro really kind of highlight a lot of the value of GA. Because, like, for example, this was like a 20 minute, 25 minute flight. I think to drive up here, that would have taken, what, probably three hours? Yeah, it's about I two mean, and a half. Yeah, two and a half, three hour drive. So, you know, it's just so, I mean, it's, it's not, you would never do this if you were just driving. You would never drive up here to go to lunch. Uh, but with an airplane, you can't. And that ends up happening, you know, all over the place. Uh, with business meetings, you know, you would, there's a lot of things that you can, uh, you know, where you can do business in a place like this, and it's just a, a quick little day trip instead of, you know, some overnight thing with, you know, a few places to stay, like that, uh, what was it, the Berry Motel or something that we just saw? Uh, I don't think I'd want to stay there. And so, you know, so as a, as a result, you know, people couldn't fly up here, they wouldn't do business. So there's a ton of little benefits like that to having small airports all over the place. Yeah, so we'll climb on up to... 6,500 now. Traffic, Came over at 5,500 and it was a little bumpy, November, so hopefully this will be a little bit better. The other super important thing about small airports are just that it makes general aviation possible, which makes every other sort of aviation possible. And any, anybody that you're flying with on a commercial airliner started off flying GA, and so if there's not places to fly, then people don't do that. And so. Uh, Really, in the United States in particular, we've got something very, very special with GA. Unlike this anywhere else in the world, where you can just hop in a plane and go anywhere at any time at such low cost and, and just all around so easily. And so I think it's really important that we, you know, take airports like this and, and make sure we preserve them and use them uh, so that you know future generations can use them and that we, you know, continue to grow for the aviation community, the pilot community. I think it's important to note that you know there have been several times just in the past couple of years. Uh, when I've wanted to fly somewhere, uh, to meet somebody up in New Hampshire where I couldn't go with them and you know, I looked at airports to fly into and it turned out that it just wasn't going to work because the closest airport was like a half hour away and so I would have just had, they, like, they would have had to drive, you know, or I'd have had to figure out a car, it was just too complicated and then I found out that if I'd have been doing it 20 or 30 years ago I could have flown into an airport that was literally like right across the street and that happens a decent amount, you know, there were a lot more airports that you know, in, in the past, and that's not to say that we're in, a, in poor shape now. Like there's still tons and tons of air. There's, I think there's an airport, a public use airport in the continental United States, uh, contiguous United States, on average like every 15 miles. So we're doing pretty good there. Uh, it's you know unmatched anywhere else in the world, but we need to make sure that we keep it that way. And so I think that's really important. That's why I love little out of the way places like Moldboro. I think it's a ton of fun, and uh, it's just really important to the flying community as a whole and uh, also just, you know, the infrastructure of our entire country. It's, it's really something special to just be able to hop in a plane and, and go fly somewhere and grab lunch or do business or, you know, just get away for the weekend or, or whatever it is that you're doing. And now we'll call Lawrence. What was it? Del Delta Golf? Delta? I have no idea. We'll just do the usual. We have the ATIS. That's like one traffic on Lancer will be landing 2-3. That's like one Roger. Hold short of 2-3. Lawrence Star Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa, 8 to the north to land. Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa, Lawrence Tower, report midfield right downwind, runway 32, altimeter 3014. 3014, report midfield right downwind for runway 32, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa. See, yeah, that worked out. We don't need to know the ATIS. As we've already established, you just look at the windsock. Right. <laughs> Unless you're in Moultonboro. <laughs> right. Look at the tattered rag of a windsock. Right. Bonanza 7 Hotel Papa, midfield right down, wind 32. Bonanza 7 Hotel Papa, wind 3304, runway 32, clear to land. 32, clear to land, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa. Okay, 
Gears down. Right on. A little extra energy, but that's okay. Let's pull the power back. Go prop pull forward. 